I want to bring up Lakia Brown from uh, the University of South Carolina. I want to bring up Morgan Campbell from Indiana University Bloomington. And I want to bring up Stanton Adams from the Citadel. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hey. Jeremy. hey. Um, so let's just jump into it. We're going to chat social media today. And as a first question, I really wanted to ask how each of you got your start in social media, the origin story. Uh, so Lakia, let's have you uh, chat about that first. Sure, so my origin story is kind of long, but for the sake of time, I will condense it to the best of my ability. Um, I entered into USC as an athletic training major, and after about a year and a half, I realized it wasn't for me, so I changed my major. Um, and in between that transition semester, I was very, very confused. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I attended a conference where my current boss was a speaker and she was talking about social media marketing. And um, it immediately piqued my interest, but I knew I wanted to be back in sports. So I spent a very long time going through the athletics directory to find who was managing social media so I could see if they had an internship opening. And long story short, I applied for the internship and I got it. And I worked with uh, most of the major sports, both basketball teams, football, the main athletics account. And then my senior year, I was the sole contributor for our mascot, Cocky. And um, two years of that am amazing internship, I graduated. And then a couple of months later, I became the social media specialist at the university. And I've been here for two and a half years and it has been amazing. Yes, persistence. Love that. <laughs> and brand and some brand loyalty as well. Just a, a nice Definitely. journey through. That's awesome. What about you, Morgan? How'd you get your start in social? Yeah, so I went to IUPUI, which if you haven't heard of that before, it's Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Um, so it's a great school having a nice little combo of rivals right there. So I went there for journalism and I actually started all the social pages for our office of orientation when i worked there and that led me into an internship at the central marketing and communications office um, back in 2017 so that was my senior year and then luckily made it good enough connections and um, six months later got a full-time job where now i'm at indiana university bloomington um, and so i've been there now for two and a half years as well very cool. Very cool. Love that. Um, Stanton, how about you? Would love to hear from you. Well, uh, Jeremy, I think like a lot of other people in higher ed, especially uh, I'm at a small school. So um, social media management kind of fell in my lap, honestly, when we had some office turnover. And it's one of some uh, other things that I do here. Um, but it's something that we uh, I'm a small part of a large team that helps contribute to our social strategy. Everybody wears multiple hats. And, um, you know, uh, I just play a, a small part in, in the overall content strategy here in the office. Awesome. Um, you mentioned social strategy, so I want to talk about that a little bit. I know the last year has been, uh, no surprise to anyone, has been very different for, especially for um, higher ed uh, folks. So um, let's talk about the last year and how you connected with students. Um, Standon, we could start with you and kind of round robin backwards. Um, how did you connect with students and stay engaged this last year on social? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when it comes to social media strategy, Jeremy, I would say that there are a lot of things about our environment that changed in the last year, but our strategy in large part didn't change a whole lot in the last year. And, um, you know, whereas a lot of um, or, or, you know, some uh, colleges and universities in August, when it came time to return, uh, did, did not come back to campus. Uh, this here at the Citadel, we did. Um, because we have a, a very unique experience, um, a very unique training model here uh, that um, really required that in-person experience in an adapted format. And so our strategy as we moved throughout the fall semester and even as we've continued here in the spring semester is to have a visual content strategy that demonstrates our ability to set conditions for our cadets and students to return to an adapted model um, that provides the instruction, instruction training experience uh, that we're known for while also protecting their health and safety. Um, and so that's really in large part what our strategy has been here in a COVID environment. So uh, again, the core pieces of the things that we always do in, in, in communicating our brand promise um, have not changed. It's the way that we've captured events that's changed because they have changed. And so again, capturing those things 
in a way that demonstrates our ability has been really important. And I'd be remiss not to give a shout out to our uh, photographer, Cam Pollock. He is in the Slack group. So um, I'm not the guy who takes the pictures. He is. He's the visual mm -hmm. genius there. Yeah. Shout out to all the photographers out there who are uh, helping the social teams. Uh, Morgan, how, uh, how about you? Yeah, so last March when everything hit, um, we went fully remote um, after spring break, which was a big change. And really for those first, that first month or two, we were just in like crises mode 24 seven. It felt like trying to respond to all the questions that our students and parents and um, staff and faculty, I mean, everyone on our campus had. And it was very overwhelming at first, um, but luckily we have a really strong team and um, learned how to adapt. And then after that, um, we in the fall, we came back in hybrid mode. So not every student came back to campus. Um, and if they did, not all of their classes were even in person either. Um, so we had to adapt with that. Um, and really our goal was to not just tell the students you need to do this, this and this, or like you're in trouble. Like, we know that's not going to work with college students. Um, we were all there once. We're going to do what they're going to do what they want to do. Um, so what we tried to switch our messaging is really to make them feel like they were doing this for our campus and what they were doing was working. Um, and luckily, we had pretty low case numbers. We never had to go back remote. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. But we really wanted to empathize with them. And we put out messaging like, you know, caring for others is a good look for you. Um, empathy is always in style. Compassion looks good on you. So really making them the heroes of our campus and saying, you know, without you, we wouldn't be on our way back to normal. So we've been continuing that throughout the whole year and now kind of switching that up with the vaccine, like, you know, and flu shots, especially too. So, excuse me. So really making sure that they know like, what they're doing is helping us. Um, and then also we um, implemented a digital ambassador program, our Hoosier Hype Team is what we call it. And it's a group of 16 students who are posting on social for us on their own little like influencer accounts almost. Um, but I like to just call them ambassadors more because they're really um, the face of campus for us. And we've made that a nice two-way relationship where um, we hear from them about things coming up on campus and then they are also going to events for us where we may not be able to go to just because of restriction, restrictions at all times. I love that. Tapping students to um, stay informed, engaged. That's really cool. Uh, what about you, Lakia? Oh, man, I feel like I'm about to repeat everything Morgan just said because <laughs> everything has been pretty similar, honestly. Um, we also went um, hybrid in the fall of 2020. Um, and I guess like how we connected with students the best was leaning on them to tell a story of how we pivoted because I'm sure any higher ed social media marketer can attest that this past year has been hard and administrations have had to make very difficult decisions. Some, you know, weren't very well recepted, I guess. Um, so really just leaning on our Gamecock guides, which is like our version of the Who's Your Hype team, um, to tell stories on, on different platforms, um, as it made sense, um, in our content calendar. And they had a special role because even though they're like half content creators, they were also peer leaders that would reach out to students in isolation and quarantine. So they really had like a dual role, which helped us and and helped them as well and really kept like that that gamecock spirit alive and a very personalized touch we really leaned on them to not have to put out like very stuffy like university messaging right love that um i wanted to talk about you mentioned content calendars and i know as social media managers we talk about content we talk about planning there are all these tools that come to mind um and different tools that each brand and team uses. Um, so I wanted to ask about uh, the tools that we use in the programs typically that you use for scheduling and managing uh, social posts. So Morgan, let's start with you this time. Um, can you tell us about any tools or programs that you use to schedule or manage social? Yeah, so our team, we're a big fan of Sprout Social and that has really been like the core of, 
um, everything we do and where we go to. So it's a great scheduling tool, but it's also great for um, our analytics and it holds a lot of, it has an asset library um, piece as well. So instead of always uploading the same graphics or the same text um, throughout the semester, we can go to that and it's right there for us ready to go um, and we can schedule it out. And it has a great calendar feature where we can put notes on there. So um, like yesterday was a wellness day where students got the day off. So we can put that on our calendar, make sure that we remember that that's coming up so we can start planning ahead. Um, and like I said, it has analytics and also a great listening tool. And so we've been able to track um, a lot of great sentiment. Um, not always great, I should say, but the sentiment we get is a great volume. Um, and so that has really helped us um, connect with our leadership and let them know like, you know, this is how our students are feeling or this is how our staff is feeling right now. Um, here's positive, here's negative, maybe neutral where we don't have to worry about it just yet, um, but know that it's coming on the horizon. So Sprout has been a really great tool. And I'll also um, say we use Canva a lot and not just for like their templates, but because we have, um, a large group of student interns. Um, we have four all together and Adobe doesn't always work on their laptops. It slows down their laptops and they're not able to come into our office. Um, you know, they don't have all the amenities that they would usually get. So at Canva, we're able to really collaborate on designs, go in there really quickly, approve or change things around when we need to. So that's been such a great tool for us this past year. Um, with our interns and just with our team, because I mean, just the access, ease of access of it has been great. Cool. I wanted to ask a follow-up question about Canva. Um, I've heard and seen stuff myself about Canva being like really easy for graphic design and stuff like that. Are these interns graphic designers as well? Do you have graphic designers that you work with um, that don't use Canva, or, or maybe your graphic designers are using Canva? Yeah, so our graphic designers um, have actually, we did like a little workshop with between our full-time graphic designer and our interns where um, they went through the basics of different design elements and assets. And then we also uploaded into Canva our different um, logos, our brand colors, assets that they designed so that we can still be in um, within our brand guidelines, um, but also like have a little bit more freedom and it also takes a load off of our graphic designers who are trying to design everything from um, digital posters to you know different ads so um, we do things so constant and um, like on the go that it has really been that lifesaver for us so it's been like a nice team collaboration with it all very cool i love that stanton how about you how about some like tools and programs that you use well, we also uh, use Sprout Social for our social media management. Um, I love that tool. It's, it has, again, just like Morgan was saying, I won't repeat everything she said, but we use all of the same tools in Sprout Social. Um, excellent tool, very easy to integrate that into all of our channels. Uh, we also rely heavily on Photo Shelter when it comes to our, uh, our photo content. And so um, oftentimes uh, our photographer is out running around campus throughout the day, capturing multiple events. Um, Sometimes uh, he gets those uh, up into Photo Shelter in real time using the FTP, and, and so I can access the gallery um, that way. He'll send me the link, and also, um, you know, he'll send me a link after the fact as well when we have uh, different events going on. Actually, just today, we've used Photo Shelter because um, one of our pinnacle events of the year, Recognition Day, happened early this morning. And so uh, we posted some photos on Instagram a short while ago and uh, across all of our social channels, actually. And um, on our traffic driving channels, uh, we included a link to photo shelter so that uh, parents and alumni and anybody else who wants to see all of those photos uh, uh, can, can view those. We also take advantage of photo shelters uh, digital storefront. And so that's built into that as well. So photo shelter is an important tool to our workflow. Um, and then we also use Creative Suite, uh, Adobe Creative Suite for our video product, um, for uh, all, of our, uh, all of our visual assets. Very cool. I know Adobe is very popular for that type of stuff, and it's awesome to hear that um, Photo Shelter has had an impact on on your uh, your your team's work, but also just today's event as well. Um, yeah. Lakia, how about you? What is, what about some tools and programs that you and your team use? So our my team is very much native. Uh, we post everything natively in each platform. We try to optimize for each platform. 
Um, but in addition to the native platforms, we use PhotoShelter and Libris for photo and like video assets to share between um, different groups in our office. Um, we also use Sprout Social for the listening and reporting tool. But um, something that has been very useful over the last year is we formed a partnership with our Social Media Insights Lab in our College of Information and Communications. And they give us a quarterly brand watch report. Um, and in addition to that partnership, we can also get ad hoc reports as we need. So if there's something that comes up that we kind of want to assess the sentiment deeper and quickly, um, we'll ask them for an ad hoc report. I can't speak specifically to what my graphic designer and <laughs> and videographer uses i know they use creative suite um but they're amazing and i don't exactly know what they use but we use a lot mm -hmm. of different things if, if that helps <laughs> fair enough um you you mentioned insights and reports and that's that's a really good segue to my next question because i want to know um about each of your teams uh like how you measure success uh when it comes to social and so like yeah i can go right back to you um how do your how does your team measure success and like what kpis do you focus on um, so our major KPI and always has been has been engagements. Um, and that is something we have focused on from day one, but that also helps us dictate what is maybe missing the mark and how we can adjust that going forward. Um, I mean, having an increase in followers is always awesome, but if those followers aren't engaging with your content, you know, you kind of have to reassess what to do differently. Um, but I will say we have kind of prioritized special engagements. So like saves and shares on Instagram, quote tweets on Twitter, um, all of those like non likes and reactions and stuff. We try to like, get a deeper look at those and, and see how people are spreading our content far and wide. Yeah. I've heard a lot more people, um, jump in on the, the saves as important, uh, analytics to, to look at on Instagram specifically. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Um, Morgan, how about you? Yeah, um, I definitely agree with the key. We look at engagements for sure. Um, and one of the main pieces of engagement, I'll say too, um, one thing when we, especially at the beginning of March last year, things that we post on Facebook, honestly, the reactions have been a really great way for us to figure out like, you know, people are interacting with it, but how are they interacting with it? And if we get like more angry um, reactions over maybe a like or a love or whatever, you know, that'll help us like go back to our leadership and be like, you know, this has been kind of a negative response. Like, what can we do? Or is there anything else we can add to this to help kind of relieve those feelings? Um, and we've also in the past year really um, looked into more with comments and direct messages. So that's been where we've been, like I said, with the reactions where we've been able to tell like, you know, our audience is reading it, they're seeing it, but how are they, um, how is this sitting with them? Like, how do they feel that we're going back in the fall, but it's still like a hybrid version or that, you know, commencement's happening, but we can't have their families there because of health and safety guidelines. So. Um, we've really been trying to interact with our audience more because, I mean, there are a lot of times where they start out mad in the comment sections or they send us a really angry direct message. And after talking it through with them and trying to figure out like what's wrong and maybe there's another way we can like alleviate that, then, you know, they end up having a better feeling about us afterwards. Um, and then also with comments and direct messages, um, it's kind of like a little trick in Instagram that, you know, they'll start seeing our content more in their um, timeline. So then they may start engaging with it more in the future after we have that conversation with them in their inbox. So um, really having those more personal connections have been um, our priority this past year. Yeah, and social media managers, I think you'll all agree with me. We're often um, a member of the support team as well with direct messages and comments. Um, so that is definitely important to focus on interacting directly with with fans and followers. Um, Stanton, how about you? For our team, it's engagement and engagement rate all all day, every day. Um, for me, the most important thing for us to to track and monitor is the meaningful engagements that we're receiving on the content that, that we're producing. Um, and and like both Morgan and Lakia have said, a, a lot of times that takes uh, stop, think, assess, uh, reassess, reproduce. You know. 
Um, but for me, especially when I think about the COVID environment, uh, and especially when I think about that period in March to when we returned here on campus in August, um it can be very tempting as a social media manager to want to fill the void you know to want to fill the empty space and uh in fact that that's a trend that I, I see a lot across social media for all brands it's just wanting to fill the space just wanting to post every day when the reality is um it makes a lot more sense to stop pause reassess and figure out how can i or how can our team produce content that's going to be me a meaningful authentic brand experience so that people can get a true glimpse of what life is like here for us at the Citadel or at USC or at IU. Um, so people can get a true glimpse of what uh, is going on in, with our brand today um, and, and how we're continuing to deliver our brand promise. So to me, uh, when you follow that approach, that's how you succeed at engagement rate. And um, yeah. I love that. That's really stuck with me too. I know we've talked about, we've done a little dress rehearsal here to chat with each other. And that's definitely something that stuck with me too is is not not feeling the need to just post the post but really focusing on what's important especially at a, a you know a university where you know you really want to uh, make an impact on the students and your followers so i really like that um i want to rewind a little bit because we have a question about uh, what we we're talking about before if anyone has an answer to this please feel free to chime in and if not maybe someone will chime in on slack um, but do the higher ed designers that y'all work with um, put any metadata into the images before upload or is that only added from within the photo shelter? So we don't have photo shelter um, with our institution yet, maybe. Um, but <laughs> we use Google Drive and um, we've used Box previously before too. And our photographers will put in that metadata in there, which has been um, super helpful for us when we're like trying to search for something that you know we may need on the fly or we just thought of something and we need it within the hour or whatever um so we had that component in there and it's it's always great to have cool okay good good to know um let's do a wrap-up question here i wanted to end on this note um as uh, social media managers we're always on our phones we're constantly working so what do y'all do to unwind and disconnect from it all lakia let's start with you um yikes <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> disconnecting, disconnecting is not my strong suit exactly. Um, when I disconnect, it, it's me sleeping, essentially. What I do is I take a step back from the brand accounts that I manage, and I kind of like wind down like with my timeline because it's funny. Like, I don't know about y'all, my timeline is hilarious. <laughs> um, so I just kind of wind down that way. And it hasn't always been this way, but like having been here by myself, like, I can't have conversations with my cat, you know, so I'm still having conversations with people online. Mm -hmm. um, and that has been helpful for me, like navigating this like work from home period. Um, but the short answer is to disconnect, I sleep. Other than that, I'm on my phone and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can relate. Uh, Morgan, how about you? Yeah, I wish I could tell you, you know, I do yoga and I bike and I go hiking all the time. <laughs> I would pull totally you on. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm with Wikia. I'm on Twitter a lot on my own timeline, um, just connecting with people who are also in the same boat because then it kind of makes me feel better. Like, okay, not the only one I can get through this. Um, but I also resort to watching TV a lot because it's like one way where, you know, I'm still present in the day, but I can disconnect and watch like funny, lighthearted content and not get yelled at by a student or a parent that day. Um, that's been kind of my go-to this past year. Love that. How about you, Stanton? Yeah, I mean, it's hard and I'm not naturally a disconnector, just to be honest. Um, and so, especially when it's all like right here on my phone, on sure. my watch, you know, it's like constantly, it's very easy to just get caught up into it. Um, especially like, but like he and Morgan said, it's when it's linked to your personal stuff. So to be totally honest with you, oftentimes I uh, disconnect by force when my boyfriend takes my phone from me and like throws it on the other side of the room. Um, but, uh, you know, in all seriousness, disconnecting is really important. And what I've had to tell myself or remind myself is uh, the comments are still there tomorrow. You know, the messages are still there tomorrow. Um, of course, it's important to monitor, you know, for things that can be urgent or emergencies, but in large part, everything can wait till tomorrow. Um, and in order to be most effective at our job as social media managers and as marketers and as people in higher ed, um, 
we've got to disconnect so that we can continue to serve our population, you know, in, in the best way possible.